kind of shooting this one from the hip, so to speak, <laughs> from the neck. Earl, I got you a beer. It's a 32 ounce instead of a 40, but I drank the 40 yesterday, um, and I went through the majority of this beer already earlier while I was starting out painting. And uh, anyway, so here's to you, Earl. Your videos ground me. Can't say this video is about about your videos or about you, but but drinking and drinking on a video, you know, no one else can do it better. Don't know what's going on with your your subs though. <laughs> They're very confusing to me, your subs. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I think it's 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 the votes that you're getting on your videos that makes me unnerved. And I sat there and I thought, how did he come by these subs that are downmarking him so much? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. All I know is I got over a stumbling block on the painting. The painting's been wearing at me. And... Uh, so I finally realized that what I needed to do, besides mix beer and pharmaceutical painkillers together, is to break out the oil paints. And so, as you can see down here, I have a full palette of oil paints now, and it's so relaxing because I have been touch and go with the acrylics for so long that I'm always trying to maintain them and work with the paints that I get one little thing done at a time and with the oils I get to spread things out a little bit more I get to relax into the painting get to smear things it's gonna be kind of nice to to move into the oil section and it's time so so that's what I'm doing I might go back to acrylics later but that's what I'm doing right now. And um, I don't know. I touched a little bit on on these two green people and put in the bishop. Anyway, now I just thought I would work with some of the characters and talk a little bit about Nestor. Nestorianism. Nestorianism is the belief that that uh, Jesus had two two natures: his human nature and his divine nature. And I think a lot of people that suffer from bipolar would probably be good candidates for Mestorianism. Anyway, you can read about it on Wikipedia. I'll drop the link below. But something about these Nestorians is that they were once accused of dividing the invisible once accused of dividing the invisible. And you won't find that on Wikipedia, but... Um, and that has me thinking about... Uh, just about the idea of of talking about entities that aren't here as if they are here as if a non-existent being has has a vote in something. Uh, when I say non-existent, I almost mean non-present in kind of the, the spirit lives on forever sort of mode and modality. Anyway, just thinking a little bit more about Hellfire and and 
the idea of what it would mean to split Christ into a multitude of characters that are kind of like your own personal Jesus. Oh, I've got my own personal Jesus to listen to now. He's going to tell me everything that I'm thinking, and he's going to do it in real time. Anyway. So, note to self, today, Mike, is the day that you got uh, offered to put your, your paintings in that that new flick, and you became excited about it, and then you got your drive to get your painting gear on, and get painting, and get red paint, get painting, beer, and painkillers, beer and painkillers, so there you go. Sometimes I think things just work out with no necessary rhyme or reason to them. And sometimes I think you can petition the Lord with prayer. <laughs> you can, in fact, petition the Lord. doesn't mean anything's going to happen, but you can petition. Which word is this exactly? That seems as if it's an infinite unknown. Unless you hear from, from what you believe is a God himself or herself itself. Okay, so I don't know whether or not to make this chap's hair blonde or brown, and the idea of painting it red came to mind. That sounds about right. Why don't I paint it red? So, you got to go sign the model releases for the paintings by Thursday. And, and so get on that. Get on that. Hopefully they show up and it's beautiful. You know, I tell myself sometimes to stop making YouTube videos. Just absolutely stop. That what I'm doing is creating just a future hailstorm of sorts. But somehow I believe in positive growth. At least, uh, I mean, after spending so many years on, on neutral or negative growth, actually trying to hone in on what positive growth looks like and, and running with it, letting go of the things that tie you down, But at the same time, not letting go of the one thing that's always been there for you. And that is my own hand. Letting my hand do some of the work. Um, so I was just thinking of the Nestorianism again, and how uh, duplicitous, duplicity you could get in your own mind, always trying to balance your sin and your self-pleasures with your righteousness and your virtue and how you can split your soul up kind of fighting for these two and then if you identify 
with with a god character you might anthropomorphize that bipolarity as opposed to god what was it called mono uh something like that which which says that that Christ's um, divine nature enveloped his human nature something of that effect and so that Christ was only ever divine Right, Kitty. Or maybe it's not right. In my most trying time, <laughs> the cat was going to walk in the paint. In my most trying time, I appealed to to a Christ, and the 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 result I got from that appeal was something that said like you don't need the Mormon Christ and I sat there and I thought I don't need to paint paintings with Christ that fulfill some LDS ethic even though I can put ah, coffee in hell <laughs> so some of their hell attributes are in there which makes it a, a, a nicer uh, more comfortable hell, if you will, if you must, if you must hear me out about what hell is, you can get a kinder, gentler hell. Hell the Pokemon, Pokemon hell. Zit hole hell. Okay, one thing that the oil colors, having them out, does help with is shade, shadowing and shading. Um, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't necessarily help me choose the colors any faster. So I'm a little bit reserved. Steve Winwood's been my band of the week. What's going on in the membrane? Okay, so I wanted to get at a greater point having to do with Nestorianism. I wanted to get at a, a greater point about the dissolution of self when one is trying to put oneself in a, in a good limelight, they could almost instantaneously flip the script and see themselves in a, in a negative limelight. Like they're causing, they're part of the disease, they're part of the problem, they're not part of the solution. That's why antinatalism is, you know, cutting a guy's head off to cure his headache. The, the idea of ending suffering can be something that can be done whilst on the planet. It's a, it's a goal that many generations of man have been striving for. And that's why I wouldn't hesitate to well, I might hesitate a little bit to be a father, but ultimately I think I'd be a, uh, a, a better man for being so. And I, I was thinking about echoing, echoing souls into the future, that your children are echoes of yourself. And even if your children don't know it, they're still echoes of, of their parents. The parents walk them through their lingual development. They guide them, and they shape them, and they shape their perception. This, this idea that 
that being disgruntled is some sort of reincarnation of a previous soul as opposed to the self-indignation that one has towards one's own history and behavior. You know, the, the anti-natalist notion of suffering is, is one of self, um, of self-pity. Of, of, and perhaps I shouldn't say that, not in all cases, but, but I do think that there's an element in a lot of antinatalist minds that is self-pitying of themselves relative to what they conceive the world to be, the limit of what their conception of what the world is that they call truth and ontology or reality, empiricism. And there's so much more. There's so much more echoing a life into the future that you get to pass on your religious frame, your notion of what's real and what's not real to your children. And it's an intergenerational story that continues. And the tree of life is replenished. And it continues to grow. And this isn't saying anything about the potential horrors of man on the planet. It's just talking about the tree of life, about growing life, about wanting to grow life. having it be a desire and being a human enough to know that when you you're having sex that you're capable of reproducing. So that when you're having sex, part of wanting to have sex in certain cases could be reduced to saying one wants to have children as opposed to one just wants to orgasm. You know. Okay, I'm moving slowly again. Perhaps it's time for a little bit of half Thor. A little half Thor in the house. I probably have a good 30 minutes in me today before I gotta crash. Get back. Get off my spine. duplicitous nature of splitting your psychology up, your ego up, into two or more segments that war against each other. I think a lot of people suffer from not being able to make a single decision about things. They would rather not make a decision about something when there's two negative options. They would rather choose neither. And then they're dragged through self-torment of not being able to make a decision and then falling into a neutral state that didn't serve them or anybody at all. Yeah, the Pink Floyd song. You run and you run to catch up with the sun, but it's sinking. Sure. 
was just thinking of that uh, that song about not knowing what to race towards in your youth. And so you meandered around your hometown. Kind of all the exceptions to Pink Floyd, the things in Pink Floyd that you wouldn't want to teach your kids about, maybe kind of this darker review of how the world might be perceived based on bad performance or null performance, a very null performance in one's life because one doesn't know what to do with their time or what to focus on. So the Heidegger notion of hand, hands in the world, what are your hands doing? That creates a dupli duplicitous uh, notion in myself, duplicitous notion in myself between my mind and my body. Just it brings up the mind-body dichotomy. And I wonder about what my hand does, what the exercise of my hand should be. I am almost creating more problems with this painting than I'm solving right now, but well, it's got to be done. I got to, I got to get this painting behind me as soon as I can. It's got too many, too many energies in it. Okay, I think I'm going to do blue hair. Yeah, I think this painting needs some blue. How are we doing time-wise? 22 minutes. Mike, this is also the day that you went van shopping for your next hard mobile. We haven't settled on a van yet. Well, Earl, I almost got all this down. Yep, all the smoking in Earl's videos, the hiking with Akizia, Akita, Akilia, and uh, and the absence of Irma, with uh, with plenty of drinking and plenty of narratives to go along, kind of give us a a more robust picture of her, who Earl is is maintaining kind of the, the least amount of a footprint he could put on the planet. You know, he even carries his, his uh, match, matches out of the woods. He doesn't want to leave those in the woods. He's trying to leave uh, the least kind of imprint he can. But he wants, he wants his being to be known enough, at least to itself, by making these recordings. Oh yeah. And what is it about one's maintenance of ego that has them wanting to record, have record of their person in things? Oh, my God. Ah. My neck is, is scraping at me right now. Oh, okay. I only got one more muscle relax in the last week, two, 48 hours. It's 
screw it. I gotta squeeze in here. And Okay, but this isn't going to work because I, for my oil paint, did not lay anything out for my turpenoid, my robotic turpentine, that is, or my linseed oil. See that? Linseed oil, do you see that? Do you? Do you? Do you? Hi, everybody. Hi. Now I, there I go. I'll put it in there. There we go. A cat, a cat, a cat, a cat food container, thingy majini. Oh, it's been a long time since I've done oil. Stay back, kitty. Down. Just the smell of oil paints is so nostalgic for me now. It just brings me to my earliest days and in college, really, painting. I shouldn't say my earliest days in college painting, but my earliest days of painting in college. And I was taught from a guy that didn't have... He, 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 liked, he liked to teach through... Um, what his didactic method was sitting there painting in front of you while you you observed him painting at times and then times you would paint alongside him and for the most part that's how that's how the course was taught as you paint alongside him, and then every now and again he would walk around and talk to you about your painting. And then each week we would have an assignment that would take a week to do, and when we'd get back we would do a critique. Sometimes it would take a couple weeks to do it. So we we'd have more painting time. That was with Glenn Edwards. There was another teacher named Chris Terry. Chris's teaching method was to walk around the class. He did not paint while you were painting, but he showed his his caliber in the paintings that he did paint in the galleries that he was in. Um, but you painted very boring, mundane stuff like uh, uh, fruit on a, a cloth laying over a chair. It's kind of still lifey stuff. And that's kind of what he was known for, was still lifey stuff. But his teaching method was to walk around the class while you were painting and talk to you and give you really long stories just these uh, and bits of advice and uh, on color theory, brush stroke, um, other artists that you could reference. Um, he he was a really good teacher, and I forget. I remember a Moshe Smith, Moshe Smith, and he taught line work. We spent a whole quarter just dipping our brushes into ink and painting quick lines, quick little gestures. And um, we just have papers, stacks of papers of these things that we'd work on. And it was to loosen us up and to get us more, I think, into kind of an Eastern mind frame as far as how to handle a brush stroke and, and what the instances of your hands can, can, can produce. Anyway, I think I've made some progress today. I think I'm on a half hour. So, yeah, have to let me know what you think in the comment box below.